Hi there, Virgo. Thank you so much for stopping by for your monthly in-depth tarot video forecast. This forecast is for the month of January. And since my December forecast went through the 2nd of January, we're actually starting this January 3rd, running through the 31st. I am changing the format a little bit. I was breaking this down into four or five um, sections per month because I wanted to look at the energies in depth, but I was finding that I was getting a lot of redundancies between time frames. So we are expanding that window out. We're doing two time frames in a month. And so this first time frame that we're going to look at Virgos is going to be January the 3rd through the 16th. For those of you who are cross-watching, you are welcome to be here. However, you should know that energies are not reversible on this channel. And so this reading is about Virgo and for Virgo. If you want to find a reading that is about you, then you want to watch the readings that are for your sun sign, rising sign, or moon sign. Okay, let's get some cards on the table, Virgos. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, guys, the first thing that we're going to look at is your environment. And the environment can be any place where you have energy or effort invested. Usually it's home, sometimes it's work, sometimes it's school. So what do we have here for your environment? Hmm. <clears throat> so it looks to me like you may be in an environment where you feel like you don't know exactly how everything works. So you may be in some type of new environment. I think that you're feeling vulnerable in this new environment and there's something about it that is not living up to what you were hoping for from it. So you're feeling um, sad and maybe even a little bit distressed or um, upset by this. Um, so some type of environment where you don't feel like you really know how to manage in that environment right now. You're feeling vulnerable and upset in that environment. Let's look and see what else shows up that will give us some insight into what may be going on in your life that would have you feeling that way in the environment. All right. Next thing that we're going to look at for you, Virgos, is your subconscious leanings. Okay, so when we're looking at subconscious, for you Virgos, you guys are really feeling um, this idea of not being able to do the things that make you happy or having a hard time really finding your happiness, finding your gratitude right now. You're feeling like um, reasons to be happy or reasons to feel grateful may be a little bit out of reach at the moment. You definitely have something going on that is causing you some sadness, maybe even some mourning right now. And so, and when I say right now, I do mean the time frame in the upper corner of the video. Um, some sadness, possibly even some mourning right now. And I feel like the sadness or mourning situation is coming from the idea that somebody in your sphere of influence has very strong narcissistic tendencies. And so, you know, they are doing some of the things that a narcissist type of person would commonly do. This could be gaslighting. This could be, um, you know, telling you one thing and having another thing be totally and completely true. This could be giving you the idea that if you behave a certain way or do a certain thing, that will make them happy. And then as soon as you do it, then that's not what makes them happy. Something else is now, you know, there's just a lot of things that happen. Basically, you can't give this person enough attention to make them happy no matter what you do. And so this is all in your subconscious mind, this idea that you're not very happy right now, this idea that actually you're exactly the opposite, incredibly sad, possibly even dealing with mourning. And you've got this narcissistic person in your sphere of influence who is making things worse, much worse than what they need to be is what I'm seeing here. The question is, what are you going to do about it? 
So let's see what happens as we work through this time frame. I want to look at learning cycle or learning style, I should say, and also communication style during this time frame and see what we have going on here. It feels like to me that there's certain information that you can get pretty easily right now, but there's other information that you want that just seems like is so hard to get a hold of or is so far away it's almost unreachable. And this could be that, you know, you're asking somebody certain questions and they're willing to answer some of those questions, but other questions they just want to be incredibly vague, run around the mulberry bush, not give you any answers at all. Um, also for learning style, it just seems like you're being very limited on the information you're finding out now. It seems like somebody is making sure that you don't have access to all that information that you're looking for or that you feel like you need. And the information that you are finding in this particular situation is information that really it, it's painful to understand or to know. Also for learning style, I do feel like there is some information that you're looking for and that you are finding it. This has such a different feel to me that I'm going to say that it really doesn't have anything to do with this other information that we were seeing where it felt like information was being hidden from you or suppressed. This is not. This is kind of an open type of thing. And I think that this is information that you're finding out about along with somebody else. So this is not just you hunting for information, but this is you and somebody else looking for information together. And I think that that information is coming up. There is some confusion around some things. That's what has you looking for this information with this other person. But I feel like as you guys find out more and more, then the confusion does diminish, obviously, because you're getting more of the big picture here. As far as your communication style, I do feel like there's somebody in your sphere of influence that you really wish you could avoid. I started to say that you're avoiding, but I don't feel like you can really avoid them. So this could be somebody at work that maybe sits in the next cubicle or as a supervisor or something like that that you wish you didn't have to talk to, but that's not really an option. And so I think that you are avoiding communication with them as often as you can, but I don't think that it's possible to completely stop with that. Also for communication style, I do feel like, I don't know if this is the same person or not, it feels like there's somebody that you need to communicate with during this time frame. I think you're actually afraid to communicate what you need to communicate to them, but the thing is that you, um, if you don't communicate with this person on this situation, then that leaves you stuck to where you just can't move forward. So this is kind of critical information that has to be communicated to this other person that I think you're afraid to talk to or afraid of what their reaction might be. I think you're afraid that they will limit your forward progress. And then lastly, but not leastly, there is somebody showing up here that I think is either a lover, literally, or somebody who is just very close to you, doesn't have to necessarily be a lover, but somebody who knows you incredibly well. And I feel like this is somebody that you are confiding in. You're basically letting them see um, all the innermost things that you're keeping hidden from somebody else and maybe even you're hiding it from somebody else just out of like some type of coping mechanism because you know somebody else would use that information against you so you're not sharing it. All right, so the next thing that we're looking at talks to me about your work during this time frame, Virgos. And so as I'm looking at work here for you, It looks to me like you are working. A lot of you are working. There may be some of you who are not working at all, but I think those of you who are working, you're just feeling like 
work is not what you need or not what you want. And it's it just feels like it's dissatisfying. It's not something that makes you feel satisfied at all. So it could be that you're dissatisfied with the pay. It could be that it's just something that doesn't trip your trigger at all. It could be something that is against your own morals even, but it's just coming up as not satisfying. So for some of you, you're in a job that is not satisfying. For others of you, I feel like you're just not satisfied because you're not officially working. You may be doing side jobs, odd jobs here and there, picking up little chores here and there for a little bit of money, but not really working. And for others of you, you're just not working. All right. And so as this is happening, as you're either not working or you're working in a situation that does not make you feel fulfilled, you are really thinking about some things. You're thinking about, number one, what is it that I bring to the work world? What are my strengths? What do I have to offer somebody who might employ me? And the other thing that you're thinking about is where can you plug your strengths in to the world and be paid for what you're good at and what you enjoy doing? So you're really considering, you know, where can I find something that would be satisfying and fulfilling in every way? Okay? And I think what you're really looking for is something that is stable financially not only stable financially, but also something where you feel very grounded, where you don't feel scattered, something that, you know, you can, you know that you can go and work at this particular job or situation, whether it's owning your own company or working for somebody else, that you can be at this situation work-wise and you don't have to be scrambling around looking for that second and third and fourth job or income on the side. So that's what you're looking for. So, like I said, I feel like a lot of you Virgos may be feeling very dissatisfied at work or you're not really technically working. So you're looking for, okay, what would be a good work situation for me to find that stability that I actually want? Okay, so that's what we have going on for work. All right, let's look next, Virgos, at that part of your personality which is being grown or expanded as you go through this particular time frame. <clears throat> Excuse me. I gotta say, not too thrilled with what I'm seeing here, actually, Virgos. And you know why we get readings ahead of time so that we can see some energy coming in and head it off at the pass if we don't like it. So this is what I'm hoping you're going to do with some of what I'm seeing here. Where you're growing or expanding right now is that there's a lot of confusion that you have within yourself. And it's kind of easy to see how that would happen with our learning style showing up as there's information you just can't tap into right now. And besides having a lot of confusion, I think maybe because you have so much confusion, you're kind of playing along with everything. You're not so happy about everything that's happening, but you're pasting on that smile and pretending everything's okay because you're afraid if you say something, then you're going to rock the boat and everything that's not cool now is going to be even less cool whenever somebody's done reacting to that. Now, this is really um, typical type of behavior that we have when we're dealing with somebody who's a narcissist who kind of bullies us and twists the truth to get us to do what they want us to do. We can be really confused and we can pretend everything's okay while we're trying to figure out what's really going on here and why everything doesn't feel okay. And then really what I have is you guys are coming to this point where you're sort of detaching from what's going on. I think that you have a situation that things are so incongruent with what's fulfilling to you that you're just basically mentally and emotionally stepping back. You're going through the motions. You're still doing all the things that you're supposed to do, but you're disengaging your mind and you're disengaging your emotions. You're not thinking about what you're doing and the, and the repercussions it might have. You are just doing what you need to to get by to keep this other person or people around you happy. 
And I feel like it, this is a really miserable place for you. And because it's so miserable, I feel you guys detaching and pulling back from it, not thinking about it, not being able to really think about it and face it because you're not ready to deal with it because there's so much confusion. You don't know which way to go with the situation. Not happy about that. I'm sorry to see that going on for you guys. All right, Virgos, let's look next at those things that you stand for during this time frame. This is something that you've had to explain or possibly even defend to somebody. And then we're going to look at how that other person views you after this conversation. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a frog in my throat today, guys. I'm so sorry. It just keeps wanting to hang around. Okay, so what you're standing for is there is this idea that you really just don't know which way to go. Your heart's telling you one thing, your head is telling you another thing, and that's giving you a hard time deciding which way you actually need to head. So there's confusion there. You are trying to get into a place where you feel like you have some leeway to make some decisions, where you feel empowered because of this confusion. You're just trying to get into a place where you can get some solid ground under you, where you feel like you know the truth and you can make some decisions based on that truth. And the problem is every time you try to get there, it backfires. You're still not being able to find the truth. You're not being able to come into this place where you're empowered enough to make a decision to help you move forward. And so somebody's asking you about this, you know, how come you aren't moving forward? Well, you're explaining, I don't know which way is forward at this time. So how this other person sees you after they've had this conversation with you is they see you as somebody who's restless, that you want to move forward, that you want to make progress. They see you as somebody who is trying to do some healing for yourself from some of the emotional traumas that have happened for you recently. And they see you as sort of doing things below the scenes, doing things, you know, under the radar, doing things behind the scenes to try to help yourself with that. So they're actually seeing you in a much more empowered place than you're actually seeing yourself at this point. You're really frustrated because you haven't gotten where you want to yet. They're seeing you as making some progress. Okay. So next thing that we're going to look at here talks to me about the flex point during this time frame. Now the flex point is that point where we have some kind of lesson or experience and that generally impacts our perspective on things and then it changes our trajectory. So that's why we call it the flex point because it changes the trajectory in some way. So for the flex point, The lesson or experience here is that you're not feeling very zen. Uh, things are just not feeling right. They don't feel like a good fit. We kind of saw that earlier. But you are working anyway, and you're working uh, in a very dedicated way in spite of the fact that everything doesn't feel right. This whole reading to me seems like you're just kind of holding on just by your fingernails to something just trying to keep moving forward until you get everything figured out. It feels like you know things don't fit, they're not working right, it's not comfortable, it just doesn't feel to be repetitive, it just doesn't feel right. But because you're not able to figure out what would feel better, you're just kind of hanging on by the skin of your teeth or by your fingernails until you can figure out, okay, what direction do I need to go from here? And so this is where that not feeling very zen, not feeling very calm, not feeling very centered comes in. And at the same time, still working hard and working in a dedicated way in spite of that feeling. To me, it comes across that you feel like you have to work because you don't know what you can do that would be better just yet. All right, Virgos. Let's look at what else is going on while you're going through this. Okay, so I feel like there's definite blockages going on between you and the people around you. So when I say blockages, this means that there's not clear communication. 
there's not really good sharing. There's people being possessive of assets or resources or information, you know, where there could be some really strong teamwork and a lot getting accomplished because of that. There's not. This is kind of a every man for himself type of energy around you. And so you're seeing a lot of untapped potential. Well, go figure. We just kind of explain that. There's a lot of untapped potential because people are refusing to work together. And so this is making you come to a point where you are trying to make a decision about, am I going to keep going on the same way that things have been going? Or am I going to go out and create something new where I may not know exactly what's coming up next or how to manipulate what's coming up next, how to operate in that new system, but at least it's something new. I'm creating it as I go along. That gives me a chance of creating something better than what I'm operating in now. And so I think you're making this decision here that you don't want to stick with what's old and no longer comfortable. You are getting ready to jump out and create something new where there's better energy and where everything is not limited and restricted by particular people. Also at the same time. There may be something that you've been doing on the side from previous, from before, that you are continuing to do on the side besides your regular work, okay? And I think that that is still going on, and it may even be going on to the point that you're starting to drop the ball with things at work because you're focused on this other thing, and you're really putting that into more of a leadership situation in your life or more of a priority in your life. Because it looks to me like you're dropping some responsibilities to take on leadership somewhere else. You could be right in the middle of a transition from one job to another job or from working a job to running your own thing in a more um, full-time type of way. Or this could be manifesting in an abundance of other ways too. But those are examples that just come to me right off the top of my head here. Once we get to the end of this particular time frame, so around the 15th, 16th, maybe even the 14th, where do we see you? Yeah, you're definitely letting go of something. And I think that it has been sort of a struggle to get into position where you're able to let go of this thing. And I think that you are um, not only letting go of a situation, but you're also letting go of or drifting away from some relationships that you've had before because of this thing. So if this is a situation that you're letting go of, say that this is a romantic partner that you're letting go of. Well, not only are you letting go of that relationship, you're also letting go of the relationships that you had with that person's family. Okay, if this is a work situation where you're letting go of a toxic work situation, then not only are you letting go of that work situation in that workplace, you're also letting go of the colleagues and the friends that you actually had at that workplace. You're drifting away from those as you move forward. But this is really, I see this as really positive. I think it's really been a struggle for you to let go of whatever this is. And drifting away from these other relationships, maybe not the easiest thing, but it's definitely the appropriate thing for you to let this go and move forward. And in fact, I think this is what we're going to dig deeper into is where we find you at the end of this time frame. I'm going to do an expanded read on that. What is it? that you're letting go of. Why is, has it been so difficult to get to the point that you can let go of that thing? And I want to look at who are these people that you're drifting away from. So we're going to we're going to just blow this up and really get all the nitty gritty information out of that that we can in the expanded. If you're interested in that, the link will be in the description box below. If not, then once I'm done with that expanded, I'll come back and we'll take a look at the rest of the month, Virgos. Thank you for being here. See you soon. Welcome back, Virgo. We're going to look at the second half of the month now. So we're talking about January the 17th through the 31st. See what kind of energy comes up for you. In this part of the month, as usual, cross watchers are welcome. Just as long as you keep in mind that on this channel, energies are not interchangeable. 
what you are watching is a reading that is about Virgo and for Virgo. So if you want insights into one of your favorite people who happens to be a Virgo, this is the place to be. But if you want to know about you, then you want to check your rising sign, your sun sign, or your moon sign, or some combination thereof, whatever it is that works for you. Let's put some cards down, shall we? Let's see what we have here. See what we have. One card at a time, mister. One card at a time. All right, my dears, your cards are on the table. Let's see what's showing up for you here. Okay, first of all, we are looking at your environment, and your environment is any place where you have energy or effort invested. Usually it's home, sometimes it shows up as work, school, etc. You want to keep an open mind for that. All right, so what I have is. You are in an environment where you're able to learn something right now. Also, remember last time we talked about that in your environment, you felt like you were sort of a new territory or a territory that you didn't really know exactly how to get around in or understand. So there was something new going on that you weren't exactly comfortable with. I see that you are sort of coming back out of that tour, you're making your environment more comfortable, more um, more easy to navigate, to understand, to operate in, okay? And I think you're doing that because there's a big shakeup going on in your environment anyway. And so because of this big shakeup, you're deciding that you've got enough on your plate without trying to figure out how to operate with this new system or way of being or whatever that is and so you're getting back into what you're comfortable with that old system because this new shakeup has some things on your plate already all right let's look next at your subconscious leanings virgo oh look at this so we have this whole thing that you're thinking about where you walked away from a situation that was depleting you or making you feel less than and you're actually finding your peace you're finding your zen now and you're healing up you're healing up your self-esteem you're healing up your emotions and just even mentally you're getting some rest and some rejuvenation now that you've gotten away from that situation that was making you feel depleted and that's all on your subconscious that's what you're thinking about and turning over. I kind of get the sense that you may feel a little bit shocked that it feels so good to be out of that situation. I'm not so sure that you expected that. Next, we're looking at learning style and also communication style. I do feel like there is something that you're learning during this time frame that you're basically just learning by the seat of your pants. As you need to know stuff, you're just figuring it out. There is some stuff at work going on that feels very foreign, and I think that that's also something that you are, I feel like you're just problem solving as things come up. And as you're problem solving, you're learning about the solutions and how those work. And then also, what else do we have about learning style? It looks like there's something that you already have a lot of information about, but you are learning more information and adding to that already deep reservoir of information on whatever this topic may be. So you could be doing some kind of refresher class, or you may be just brushing up on new things that you need to know, but definitely adding to an already deep reservoir of information on something. Excuse me. Next, we are looking at communication style. I think especially with some people, um, you may be literally blocking most of their communication except for when it seems like they're sending something that might be productive or useful. Um, it seems like there's somebody or a group of somebody's who's sending you a lot of information that may just be kind of um, 
spam spam information and so in proportion to how much information they're sending you the only thing you're really paying attention to is probably a quarter <laughs> one twenty <laughs> one out of four things of everything they send to you that means three out of four are basically junk or spam <coughs> excuse me also communication style There's somebody that I think you're sending smoke signals to. Now, for me, when somebody is sending smoke signals, that just means that we're not really addressing things head on. We're not taking the bull by the horns. We're basically making implications or dropping hints just to see if the person picks up on them or not. So you're smoke signaling somebody here. Um, and I think that you're doing it in your own very customized way. So you may be making implications or kind of saying things that this person only would understand. Nobody else would actually understand these things. Okay, and I am feeling like for some of you, this may be somebody that is trying to do this with you, trying to send you messages that nobody else is picking up on. They're just kind of smoke signaling you, maybe even right in front of a bunch of other people um, with saying some things that are going to imply some meanings to you that nobody else would realize. But for most of you, I think this is really, this is you doing that with somebody else. <laughs> there is somebody that you're sharing a lot of happiness and a lot of joy with. I think they may be coming to you with some happy news and you're very excited. And I think that you are sharing their happiness and then um, expanding on that and adding things to your happiness that go with their happiness. So I think you're kind of using that as a bouncing board to help you um, as you're celebrating their happiness with them. That helps you remember to sort of focus on some happiness things for you as well. Woo -woo. I like that. The more happiness things we focus on, the more happiness things we create in our lives. So I'm always happy to see that. Excuse me. La da 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 da. Okay, looking at work. Everything's kind of been turned on its head at work as far as security. Everything that you thought brought security when it comes to work, um, your perspective is changing. You may see other things as bringing security than what you used to before. And it looks like. When something doesn't seem secure anymore, so if you're in a work situation that no longer seems secure, which is how this looks to me, I think then you are no longer um, dedicated to the idea of sticking with that company or that business or that job, whatever that might be. And it's interesting here because this looks like, you know, this looks like a shakeup that's having a major impact on you. It's sort of opening the doors where before you felt locked into whatever this work was that was stable and secure. Now this sort of opens the doors to other options that might be out there that might be more stable and secure than what that is right now. And I think this idea that now the doors are more open to you is bringing you some healing, is making you feel less sad or aggravated, frustrated about your situation when it comes to work. All right, next thing that we're looking at here. Next, next, next talks about that part of your personality which is being grown or expanded as you go through this time frame. You have a new and inspiring, exciting, happiness making idea that you um, that you take action on and you find that it brings you a lot of fulfillment. Problem is, I think that you have somebody in your sphere of influence that's pulling up the reins and saying, whoa, 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 that's enough of that. We'll not have that going on here. You have some happiness haters around you? Is that what's going on? Somebody is really deciding unfairly that it's not a good thing for you to continue whatever this is that was bringing you fulfillment. All right, next thing that we're looking at, talk to me about those things that you stand up for, those things that you explain, those things that you defend during this time frame. So somebody approaches you about this, you explain or defend this, and then we look at how they feel about you after the conversation. 
So what you are standing up for is this idea that you feel really insecure about the idea of working together with somebody who when you collaborated with them before, they just kind of left you holding the bag and they sort of walked out of the collaboration and left you with all the responsibility. And because of that insecurity and because of that past, you don't want to start something new with them. And this is what you're standing up for to somebody else. So after this person and you have this conversation, the other person sees you as somebody who is really just trying to minimize frustration and drama in your life. And they see you as somebody who is a little bit undecided about which direction you want to go. If you want to start something new or go back to the old. So they feel like, mm, you know, maybe Virgo could be talked into this old thing again. Maybe they're seeing you as being like on the edge there where you could be pushed either way, really, as far as this decision goes. And they see you as just not really being happy with this offer that's being presented to you. So they feel like you're not happy with this offer that's being presented to you to work with this person who left you holding the bag before. You've basically already turned this offer down. They feel like, yeah, well, I can see why they aren't happy. They just want peace in their lives. They don't want frustration. But at the same time, this thing is still tempting for Virgo. They could go the other way, given the right motivation. That's what they're thinking after this conversation is over. Are they right? I don't know. Only you know that. La -da 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 -da. Okay. Next thing that we have coming up does talk about the flex point. Flex point. So this is where you have your lesson or experience, which changes your perspective somewhat, which changes your trajectory a little bit. So that's why we call it a flex point. So lesson or experience that you have right now, you have a choice to make. And this choice that you have is one that all your options are good choices. Like you can't choose anything bad. You can't choose anything and look back and go, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done this. There's just not one of those options available. And I think that whichever choice you choose here puts you into a somewhat sheltered position. There's a catch though. Even no matter which choice you choose here, there is a certain fear that you have to face to actually accomplish this choice and get yourself into that sheltered position. So is it worth it? It looks like it's worth it to me. I would make a choice and just go for it. Very cool. Let's see what else is going on at the same time. La -da 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 -da. Okay, there is some aspect of your life where you've been having a hard time getting things to go forward or go the direction that you want them to go, Virgos. And it looks to me like because of this, you've got somebody who has a big ego that decided that they could come in and start making decisions for you and tell you how to do things because things aren't going so smoothly for you. And they're really overstepping their bounds. They're taking authority where it's your authority. It's your place to make these decisions and make these judgment calls. And they're stepping in and making them on your behalf. Well, what happens here is uh, during this time frame, they're going to do that. And one time it's going to be the last time you're going to call them on it. And not only are you going to call them on it and put an end to them stepping into your territory and making your decisions, I think you also have some friends that are going to be backing you up as well whenever that happens. And they're going to be telling this person to step off the curb as well. All right, let's look next at what else is happening during this time frame. Ooh, there's somebody in your sphere of influence that I really, really like. Now this is somebody who is in some type of leadership position and they are a natural born leader. They have tons of integrity. This is a great person to have as a friend because you always know right where you stand with this person and they, they just have the integrity to stand with you if something is, is going down that really should not. <laughs> They're not going to sit by and just let this happen. And so you've got somebody like this showing up in your sphere of influence. However, 
Here's the problem. They're feeling a little bit unfocused and scattered and they're having a hard time following up on their goals. And why is that? For some of them, it's because of a child that they have. Now, that's not going to be true for every one of you Virgos that has somebody like this in your sphere of influence. But for a lot of you, I do feel like it's a child or a teenager that they're either a parent to or a guardian to or a step parent to. Uh, but somebody that is younger, that is a little mouthy, they're full of back talk, uh, to use an old world word. <laughs> um, they can be really sarcastic and cutting, and they really don't even think about the feelings of other people sometimes whenever they're doing this. They like to laugh, and they don't care if the laugh is at the expense of somebody else. And so I think that our person who has really good integrity and who is, you know, a really great person to have as a friend, I think this person is kind of coming under attack from this other person and it's making it hard for our friend with integrity to actually follow through on the goals that they have, especially when it comes to this mouthy little person, which is probably a female, probably a female just because of what almost came out of my mouth. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you, this isn't normally the way I talk, but what I heard from Sacred Spirit is this mouthy little wench. <laughs> okay, so somebody, that may be very significant to somebody. Somebody may be using those exact words as they're talking about this person that's really throwing them off course to you. Interesting. Interesting. And why is this person showing up with their problem? Because this person with their problem is having some kind of an influence on you and your life. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in their reading, would you? Or they wouldn't be in your reading, would they? <laughs> All right. So that's someone that you're basically making space for. Holding space for, even. All right. Let's look at where you are at the end of this month, Virgos. Hmm. I think you're really changing direction on something as we get to the end of the month. We see you as somebody who can give and give and give and give to the point that sometimes you give more than is healthy or good for you. You can be very self-sacrificing. You're somebody who has a lot of wisdom, who can be very nurturing, but once again, possibly even to your own detriment. And I see you making this change. Once we get into the end of this time frame, I see you making this change of um, starting to look out for yourself more, starting to make the things that are important to you more of priorities in your life than everybody else's priorities, you know, instead of the other way around. I basically see you coming to a point where you're realizing that all of the self-sacrificing that you're doing is not helping anything and certainly is not helping you, but it isn't helping the other people either because when our cup is empty and we offer somebody our cup, we're not offering them anything. And if we run ourselves out of energy or out of resources, we have nothing to offer. And so you're starting to realize that it's really important that you replenish your own cup before you go out there and help other people with theirs. And so you're having a really big shift in perspective. And this is a big shift. This is something that generally takes people time to make this shift. I feel like there's something going on here that sort of puts this wake up call right in your face that makes you take momentous steps towards getting this shift accomplished very quickly. Okay. So that's what I see for your month, Virgo. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for all the thumbs ups and for sharing this video with other people who may benefit from it as well. Of course, thank you to all of you who are buying some of the advanced readings. And thank you to those of you who are buying uh, personal reading sessions with me and personal Reiki sessions with me. It's because of all you guys' support at every single level that I'm able to do what I love to do for a living. I appreciate you all so much. Everybody have a fantastic month. And if I don't see you here for a private session between now and then, then I'll see you back on the next video. Peace out.